Hello, today I'm uh, replacing the disc brakes on a Abarth 500 because the old ones were warped. As you can see here, they're pretty blue and this means they have been uh, very hot and not cooled down uh, enough. So, I will replacing these for the new ones. And I'm also going to replace the brake pads because they are not expensive. And when you have everything open, you can just do them at the same time. The first thing you want to do is jack up the car and get the access stands under it so that you can work safely and there's no chance that the car will drop on top of you. As you can see, this is the place where I place the extra stands so that you can work safely. We have got the wheel off, you can undo the bolts on the disc brake. And when you finish with that, you can take the two bolts out of the brake caliper. The next step is to undo the two bolts from the brake caliper mount. But with the Abarth 500 this is impossible, so you need to disassemble the whole wheel hop assembly. As you can see, even with the wheel hop assembly loosened, there isn't much space to work with. <laughs> On most of the cars this is a lot easier because you don't have to undo the whole wheel hop assembly and you just can take off the brake caliper mount right away. Oh. The next step is to get the surface of the wheel hop very smooth and that there aren't any imperfections.
First you got to uh, clean these with brake cleaner to get all the grease off it and then you can mount them. On this set we got new brake caliper pad clips, so I just mounted them. It often happens that you don't get new ones and you just need to clean the old ones. Now you need to tighten the bolts from the brake caliper mount, make sure they are really tight and that they don't come loose because this is a very essential bit of your car. Now it's time to tighten the bottom one. Now you can get the four nuts from the wheel hub assembly back on and get them tightened. This is just the same as the other bolts, make sure they are very tight. We've put everything back together, and this one also. And now it's time to put the new brake pads on. But these ones have indicators for when your brake pads are worn. Uh, and this abart doesn't have them, so you can uh, just cut them off. Like that. When you're replacing brake pads, always make sure you use copper grease or ceramic grease because this will prevent the brake pads from making any noise. As you can see, getting your brake pads in is very easy. On the back side of the brake pads, I always get some uh, copper grease on it or ceramic grease so that they won't make any noise. When you change the rear brake pads on a car, you need this special tool to push the piston back in the brake caliper. The reason you need to use this tool is because on the rear side you need to push and rotate the piston at the same time to get it back in.
As you can see, the piston is pushed all the way back into the brake caliper and now you can put the brake caliper back on and get the two bolts in. Now we've got the brake caliper back on and it's time to put the wheel back on the hub and fasten the four bolts with a torque wrench on 120 Nm. But before you can torque the wheels with a torque wrench, you need to get the extra stands and the jack out from under the car. When you're finished, you need to check your brake fluid level because you have pushed the pistons in the brake back. But this is good. The next thing you want to do is get the pressure back on your brakes and you just uh, push the brakes a few times, very slow. And as you can see, the pressure is back. We're now finished with replacing the disc brakes and the brake pads, so make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Luca Karmats, and watch for new videos. See you next time.